Good evening. The latest UK case of coronavirus is the first to be contracted within the country rather than abroad. The man walked into a GP surgery in Surrey feeling unwell. It came as another patient who'd been quarantined on a cruise ship in Japan became the first Briton to die from the illness. The respiratory disease, which causes pneumonia-like symptoms, has infected almost 84,000 people in more than 50 countries. And although the vast majority of cases remain in China, the virus is now spreading faster outside that country. The World Health Organization says most, if not all, countries should expect outbreaks. Here in the UK, 20 people now have coronavirus, with Wales reporting its first patient. In a moment, we'll look at the effect of coronavirus on the global economy and we'll answer some of the most pressing questions on how to manage the threat that the virus poses. But first, our health editor Hugh Pym has this report, which does contain flashing images. Tonight, this GP surgery in Surrey was being deep cleaned after being closed to patients. A man who'd been in to see a doctor tested positive for the coronavirus. It's potentially highly significant as he hadn't been abroad. Health officials are trying to find out if he was in contact with anyone recently back from one of the worst affected countries. And in Japan, the first British fatality from the coronavirus. A man who'd been a tourist on the Diamond Princess cruise ship. After contracting the virus, he was said to have been very poorly. Five Japanese people who were on the ship have also died and more than 700 cases were diagnosed with the ship quarantined earlier this month. Two more people are being treated at the Specialist Infectious Diseases Unit at London's Royal Free Hospital after testing positive. A man from Swansea has contracted the virus after returning from northern Italy, the first case in Wales. There's been a surge in the number of calls to the NHS 111 helpline. Some callers have told the BBC of delays. An NHS source said people might have to wait longer, though the system was working. The government has sought to reassure the public. The uh, issue of uh, coronavirus is something that is now the government's top priority and I've just had a meeting with the Chief Medical Officer, the Secretary of State for Health and others talking about the, the preparations that we need to make. And welcome. The World Health Organization said the risk of a global spread of the virus was now very high, though containment was still possible. And around the world, countries are facing up to the growing challenge. Japan's Prime Minister has asked all schools to close from Monday until late March to prevent the spread. In Iran, the number of cases has gone up around 50% in 24 hours. 34 people have died from the disease. The main Friday prayers were cancelled for the first time in decades to contain the infection. New Zealand's Health Minister, meanwhile, has confirmed his country's first case today. And more worryingly, the first case in sub-Saharan Africa has been reported in Nigeria. The patient, an Italian citizen who flew into Lagos from Milan. Well, this is the, the most worrying moment now in the whole crisis. The former health secretary told me that school closures and sports cancellations might well be needed in the UK. You can look at fellow democracies like Italy and Japan and you can see that, that very dramatic things are happening and we now have to make some choices and I think the government is right to start to prepare us for some of those choices that we might want to make uh, if we want to contain the virus at very low levels of um, penetration in the population. To try to limit the virus spread, some Italian footballs being played behind closed doors. The visiting Bulgarian team at Inter Milan last night wore face masks. The International Footballers' Union says it's concerned for the safety of players. Football, after all, is a global game, and this is a global health problem. Hugh's here with me now. Um, so, Hugh, we have the first person to catch coronavirus within the UK. Explain how that's significant. Well, Rita, it's potentially very significant. This man hadn't been abroad and public health officials are urgently trying to trace his contacts or a chain, chain of contacts to see if one of them had been to one of the worst affected countries and recently returned maybe without symptoms. If they can do that, they'll be reassured. What the very difficult situation would be is if they can't work out the transmission, that would suggest the virus is rather deeper rooted in the UK than they thought. And there's more news tonight about the government's response. Yes, Labour criticised the government for not having a meeting of the COBRA Emergency Committee today and simply saying they'd do it on Monday morning. 
I do sense a change in the government's approach. There will be measures announced over the next few days in terms of public information, a big new campaign encouraging people to wash their hands vigorously to prevent a spread of the virus. But also next week, Whitehall sources are confirming there could be emergency legislation as part of a package of measures, for example, to protect the NHS and schools if there is a serious escalation of cases. But that's a big if. The line in Whitehall tonight is still that current policies could still contain this virus. OK, Hugh, thank you. Well, there have been sharp falls in global stock markets because of concerns over coronavirus. The total cost of this week's plunge in values has been more than $5 trillion. In the UK, the FTSE 100 closed the week 13% down. That's the biggest fall since 2011. The Governor of the Bank of England said it could mean the UK's forecast for economic growth being downgraded. And some fear there could be a global recession. Our global trade correspondent Darshini David reports. Don't be deceived by the cheers. That's just the traditional way to mark the closing of stock markets on Wall Street. The truth is that shares around the world have lost the equivalent of two years of the output of the entire UK economy in value just in the last week, squeezing investments such as pension funds. Reality has hit. Coronavirus isn't just a problem for China's economy, but for all our fortunes we would expect that world growth would be lower than it otherwise would be. We're not picking it up yet at all in, in um, the U UK economic indicators, uh, the survey indicators or other things. But if the world's slower than it otherwise would be, the UK's very open economy has an impact. As outbreaks of the virus have multiplied around the globe, it's become clear that the economic disruption will be equally widespread. Now, from car makers like Jaguar Land Rover to electronics giant Apple, global manufacturing supply chains are being hit by factory shutdowns in China. But demand is also affected. Efforts to contain the disease has hit travel and tourism. British Airways says it can no longer predict what its profits will be after flights to China and now Italy have been disrupted. Consumer spending has also been damaged. Starbucks and Diageo, the company behind Guinness, are among those who have seen sales fall as people stay away from bars, restaurants and shops. Now, the problem is all this comes at what's already a difficult time for the world economy. China, Japan and the UK are among the countries where growth has been faltering. Some economists are warning that perhaps £850 billion could be knocked off global growth this year, a hit that would be hundreds of times greater than that of SARS. It isn't all gloom. There are several threads to the tale of this knitwear manufacturer in Leicester, who's picked up orders from elsewhere. A lot, lot more uh, kind of new inquiries are coming through, um, but there is a bit of concern about the kind of earlier supply chain and getting raw materials in and make sure and to make sure that we're not going to run out or any of them. What can be done to support businesses? Central bankers, including tonight those in the US, have tried to calm markets by indicating that they stand ready to cut interest rates. But as they're already very low, there's little firepower left. The anxiety is set to continue. Darshini David, BBC News. So what are the chances of catching coronavirus? What do you do if you do get it? And how might it affect plans to travel abroad? Our medical correspondent Fergus Walsh has been answering some of the key questions. It's increasingly likely that we'll see outbreaks of the new coronavirus centred here in the UK. France and Germany have seen their cases suddenly double. Both have warned of impending epidemics. If that happens here, expect more school closures, the postponing of sporting events and other mass gatherings. There'll be a big increase in homeworking and that'll impact the economy. Fewer people at restaurants and shops. Seasonal flu is responsible for thousands of deaths here every year. And we know the new coronavirus causes a mild illness in four out of five people. They won't need medical treatment, but older people and those with underlying health problems are at greater risk. It's hoped containment measures will prevent the virus from getting established here. An epidemic would put serious pressure on the NHS. Many operations would have to be cancelled. 
As for a vaccine, don't expect one to be ready for widespread use for at least a year. We all have a role to play in keeping germs at bay. Top of the list is regular hand washing. It's not just a quick dangle under the tap like this. It should take 30 seconds. This virus, like others, is spread by droplets. So if you have to cough, use a tissue and bin it or the crook of your elbow. If we get a big outbreak of the new coronavirus here, then social distancing could help. Avoid shaking hands or other close contact. If you're planning to go abroad, then you need to keep up with the latest Foreign Office advice. For travellers returning from northern Italy, north of Pisa, Florence and Rimini, if you get a cough or fever, then you need to stay indoors and avoid contact with other people and call NHS 111. That advice could easily be extended to other parts of Europe. As tourists in Tenerife found, getting out of the UK was easy. Getting back, much more difficult. There's lots more information about the new coronavirus with more of your questions answered on the BBC website.